Hello, I'm Odin, and I've been dropping hints on the show about Gundam and Gunpla for quite a while now. So this time, I'm gonna do it. It's the RX-78-2 head unit, only I'm gonna build it like a wearable helmet. Mobile Suit Gundam and the highly detailed model kits, or Gunpla, have been around for 40 years. Finding excellent reference for the original RX-78 Gundam is pretty easy. It's just the scale available that can be challenging to work with. So we decided to use a 3D model of a full Gundam, separated out the head, and imported that into a program called Pepakura. This is a program that changes 3D computer models into flat paper models that you can just print out and glue together. But for a foam pattern, this is too complicated, so we simplified it. EVA foam can bend and curve in a way that paper can't, and it's much thicker, so the pattern was modified into something more usable. But I also needed an inner helmet to fit the person wearing it. This is Joseph. He's a huge Gunpla fan and gave me my first kit to assemble. I don't have a head cast for Joseph, so he agreed to try just wrapping part of his head in aluminum foil. With his help, I placed duct tape over the aluminum foil on his head, copying his shape. I have to wrap one side of his head. That way he can talk, breathe, and his right eye is not completely covered so he can kind of see. After drawing the halfway mark on his head, I continue to trace where I want the inner helmet to fit and how I want the parts to fit. The duct tape is easy to remove. I cut it up on my seam lines, trace the pieces on the cardstock, and copy that to foam and cut out a full set of left and right. I follow the registration lines that I put on the pattern and I have a simple helmet that fits Joseph. We scaled the Gundam helmet to fit over his head, but there was no sure way of knowing until after we had it built. I printed and cut out all the paper patterns, and then I cut out all the pieces at once, most of them from 6mm HD foam. The computer pattern was different than what I typically do, with much more intricate shapes, but I could see how they would all go together. And I started with the back of the head, gluing together all the darts that were cut into each piece. I applied contact cement to two or three of the pieces, one after another, since I have to wait for the glue to dry before it can stick. Then I can pull the parts together by closing up the darts, which pulls the flat pattern into the curved shape that I want. It didn't take too long, and I could join the two parts that make the back of the helmet together into one big piece. The chin was pretty complicated. I thought that I didn't want to just cut each side as a separate piece, there'd be too many seams. So instead, I tried to cut bevels or angles where the foam needed to make a sharp corner and then just have it fold together. Now, this did work, and some of the rounded corners actually looked really nice, but there was so much prep work figuring out where the bevels needed to be cut, I doubt I would do a part like this again, as I still needed to clean up some of the seams. I think just gluing flat panels together, like I did on the Mohawk, one bevel cut on the top and the rest are all panels, sharp corners, is much easier to assemble. You know, unless of course you really need a seamless curved corner. And that black line, that's where the pattern stops. The extra foam beyond it is so I can glue the parts together. And then there's the cheeks, or are they sideburns? And they're part of the top of the head. Plenty of darts to close up and the oval hole is for the head-mounted Vulcan cannons. There's a five-sided box that goes on the forehead. It's the base of the V-fin. I thought I needed to bevel all of these cuts to get as seamless of a part as I could. And that was a huge pain in the neck. Don't bother, just make panels. I would rather do the math on changing the sides to allow for the six millimeter thickness of the foam than attempt to guess at the needed bevel cuts, because none of them are just 90 degrees. On two pieces, I did need a bevel cut edge and that's for the mouth. The wedge shape is a clean line that needs two angled edges to have a sharp seam, but it's just one side, so it's kind of easy. Attach the mohawk to the back of the head, and then glue on the sides of the head, and I'm really glad I left the extra foam to glue to. I talk about this extra foam. Well, what I mean is that I overcut the pattern pieces, like extra fabric that you need to actually sew clothes together. If you look at the Pepakura pattern, it's made for paper, and paper basically has no thickness compared to foam. So all the pattern pieces made by the program assume you're working with paper-thin panels. I have to modify some of the pattern pieces to allow for the thickness of the material, or else I'm just gluing corner to corner on the foam, which isn't gonna work. On some of the thick edges, I didn't use the pattern at all, and I just cut strips of foam six millimeters less than the pattern size and glued them on edge, making the parts as thick as I needed them. 
Now, did I know which I needed to use for each part? <laughs> no, I just made my best guess. Well, there does seem to be plenty of room. That's actually That's actually hopeful. This is the first time I actually gave it a try. I kept going, well, this should work. Well, this should work. Okay, well, let's see. Can I glue the helmet, the inner helmet into it? Yeah, I can. Okay, this probably will work. Okay, good. <laughs> because foam wants to spring out flat, the base of the helmet was too wide to look right. To pull the sideburns in, I glued a two millimeter panel on the inside and then pulled on it a little when I was gluing it to the inside on the head. I was careful not to go too far because I just want them to look straight up and down. I used four millimeter foam to fill in the vents on the sideburns and I cut small triangles to glue on for those vent lines. There's a lot more little details that I'm not pointing out in this video, but you can see the parts appearing that I'm not calling out. But the steps are all very similar. Overcut the pattern pieces or make tabs to glue to. Make sure the parts are glued on straight. Try to plan ahead for what you're going to glue on next. So I've toyed with the idea of attaching the face to the helmet with magnets, right? So, so Joe can pull it off and be able to take it off. I think I'm going to go ahead and just glue it on permanently. Uh, you know, partly to torture Joe, but mostly so the face will always be right. If it was magnetized, it may not go back on exactly right, or if I don't get the magnet set right, it may always sit crooked. So instead, I'm just going to glue it on. Once the contact cement is dry and ready to stick, I protect one side with paper because I want to avoid accidental sticking. And it's easy to remove once the first side's in place. This little step is so much better than needing repairs for being in a hurry. I add some two millimeter foam panels to complete the face. I want the V-fin to be stiffer than EVA foam because I don't want them to wiggle like a bug's antenna. So I cut the fins from eighth inch foamed PVC sheet heating the beveled corner to bend them into shape. And after gluing the back panel on, I plug the end with some EVA foam. That should make attachment easier after everything is painted. Fins, all right. Let's make holes for cannons. I was lucky that thin-walled one-inch PVC pipe was nearly a perfect fit for those head cannons. Now I mark the edge of the pipe so I can cut it on my bandsaw and then glue the pieces back into place on the head. I think what I'm gonna use for the barrel is actually the end from a spring-loaded toilet paper roll holder. Longtime viewers know that I incorporate these a lot in my builds. I cut them down on my bandsaw and I cut the small tip off, which will make a better looking barrel. The plastic is really smooth, so I lightly sand the outside to help the paint stick. And then I wrap a little self-adhesive foam around the base and it's a nearly perfect fit inside the PVC pipe. I'll glue these in permanently after I'm done painting. There are lights on the front and the back of the Mohawk, so I cut some styrene plastic to make the sides of a light box. And for the part that actually lights up, I cut down a plastic light diffuser that came out of a broken computer monitor. The box is made to just slip into the front where the hole is, and there's another one that goes in the back. Technically, these are supposed to be cameras for the Gundam. Yeah, that'll work great. To make them light up, I'm gonna use some of the leftover LED strip from my Darksaber build. These are made so you can cut them at any LED, so I can wire just one if I want, but they're just white light. So I cut a piece of transparent red PVC sheet and then glue that in to change the light to red. My testing batteries are a little old, so it's not very bright. And for the front camera, I add a second layer with a hole cut in it. Now it has a light red circle to represent the camera lens, and I'll glue these in after everything is painted. With so many seams in the head, I sanded them flush, filled them with some fast drying acrylic plumbing caulk, and came back when wet sanded the whole helmet to smooth it back out. This filled in and hid nearly all the seams. I was surprised at how well wet sanding works on EVA foam. I went to add all the panel lines in the head, so I look at a real grade version of the RX78-2, and copy the lines as best I could to the helmet, doing everything in pencil first. And when I was happy with it, I used a wood burner with a fine tip and a metal ruler to burn the foam and make all my panel lines. 
There's some recessed panels as well, and for these, I cut the foam and then push it in halfway and super glue them in place on the back. I can start painting it. My first couple of coats is just white plastic dip. It seals the foam and covers some of the small seams. And then I can spray the entire head with white paint. And after it dries, I start to tape off the top panels that need to be painted gray. After the gray paint is dry, carefully peel the tape and paper away, and then start the next round for the areas that are gonna need to be red. I got to be really creative with the tape here, because I really didn't want the red paint to overspray on the white. It, it didn't happen, but that was because everything was covered and safe. And there's still a little black on the head, and the eyes are actually pretty deep. I just hand painted the black where I needed it with some hobby paint. Let the hobby paint dry, and I mix up some rubbing alcohol with black craft paints, and I can add in all the panel lines. This is actually one of my favorite parts of Gunpla, all the panel lining that I do when I'm finishing a kit. Where my panel lines were a little sloppy, I can rub off the dry paint with more rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. It's a benefit of using a gloss spray paint. There are just two decals that go on the head, and I have some custom water slide decals to put on. After they get a chance to dry, I seal the head with a clear matte sealer. There are a few metallic panels as well, so I'm gonna cut aluminum tape instead of trying to paint them on. Then I can super glue the Vulcan cannons in place and super glue the front and rear cameras to the Mohawk. And at last, I can glue the V-fins on. I have yellow clear film for the eyes, but I'm also gonna add some yellow craft foam to the inner helmet and a couple of LED lights to help make them glow. Since the LEDs are all rated for five volts, I solder the wires to a USB plug and then I can plug them into a five volt portable charger. Double check the fit of the inner helmet and the Gundam helmet on Joe's head and glue everything in place. All the paint and supplies for this project I picked up locally. HD foam was available online from Blick Art Materials. Use the link in the description of this video and you can help support my channel. Plus, if you order enough stuff, you can get free shipping from Blick Art. And it's the only free shipping for EVA foam that I know of. I made a human-sized RX-78-2 head. And it could be worn as a helmet. Now, Pepakura was actually really helpful and I enjoyed every minute of this build. And I'm really happy with the final result. In fact, I'm thinking that this might be the start of something big, maybe something long-term. You know, what if I continued making more parts until I had a full body RX-78? Does that sound like a fun idea to you? Maybe one video a month for each new part until we have a full mobile suit Gundam? Well, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. And then maybe next month, we'll get started on the body unit, which will be made from foam because this is how Odin makes. Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make a Joe. <laughs> oh, yeah, it fits me horribly, but that's, that's damned interesting. I want to thank James Cannon, Chopper, and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do make this show possible. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.